Hello and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Andrew, the Apostle. Our opening hymn is number 887, By All Your Saints Still Striving, number 887. be with you. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate one of the first disciples that Jesus called, and his name is Andrew. And Andrew is an interesting person in general, but I think if we look at the early church and how the apostles gave thanks and praise to God, who are having the privilege of suffering for the sake of the name, for the name of God, the name of Jesus. And this Andrew was crucified on an X of a cross instead of the usual cross because he felt that he was not worthy to die in the same way that Jesus had died. And just imagine that, that a person felt the privilege of suffering for the sake of the gospel. That has to be an interior experience. It has to be something that a person senses so strongly that they would be willing to allow themselves to be tortured and killed for the sake of the name. And so today as we come into this sacred space, whether we are at home or in church today, we can consider what would it be like to have that kind of courage, to have that kind of bravery, to be able to willingly give ourselves totally over to God, even to the point of suffering and death. So, sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good. God, heavenly King. 
Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him? in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did. For their voice has gone forth to all the world, earth, and their words to the ends of the world, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. 
At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. As we just heard in today's Gospel, the first disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, he calls them, and immediately they drop what they're doing and follow him. At least for me, it's interesting that they are brothers of each other. They were all fishermen, and you know, they may have actually been related to each other. Or maybe they were rivals in the fishing business. You never know. In John's Gospel, Andrew tells Peter, we have found the Messiah, and he brought him to Jesus. Later on, Jesus calls Philip, and he in turn tells Nathanael. And Nathanael is openly skeptical, and he says, can anything good come from Nazareth? Think of all the places where we don't think any good can come from. Think of all the places that I could have named or you think of, could any good come from those places? And so we have our preaching point for today. You can imagine Peter saying, Andy, you're kidding, right? We heard about this guy. He's homeless, he's unemployed, and he hears stories. There's something strange about his mother. None of the religious leaders say anything good about him or even care. How could this guy possibly be the Messiah? Andrew must have been a pretty brave guy, don't you think? In order to say such a thing to his brother, knowing probably that he would be skeptical. And he stands up boldly and says, we have found the Messiah, the anointed, or in Greek, the Christ. In fact, Andrew, the name Andreas, means manly or brave. What could possibly have convinced Andrew that Jesus was the anointed one? What could possibly have convinced Philip that Jesus of Nazareth was the anointed Messiah, Christ of God. Think about his qualifications. I just told you, unemployed, you know, homeless, wandering around, stories about his family background and all that. What could have convinced these people to drop everything and follow him? It is said that Andrew had been a disciple of John the Baptist, Another one, right? I mean, out in the desert, you know, eating honey and bugs and things like that. And when John looked at Jesus as he walked, he said to Andrew and another disciple, Behold the Lamb of God. Another interesting thing to meditate on. It says that John looked at Jesus as he walked. What do you think it was about the way that Jesus walked? What was it about the way that Jesus walked? Now, what has convinced you that Jesus is the Messiah of God? What has convinced you that Jesus is the anointed, the Christ of God? Was it the preaching of one of the successors of the apostles? Was it the testimony of a holy person's life and words? Was it knowledge that you gained from prayer or meditation or study? 
St. Paul tells us today in the first reading that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will in fact be saved. Now, if it is as it is said that after risking his life preaching the gospel, St. Andrew was willing to be crucified on an X shaped cross, he must have made that confession and he must have believed in his heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. So I ask that question. Have you made that confession? Have you believed in your heart? And if you haven't, what is preventing you from making that confession and believing in your heart? Is it sickness? Is it rejection? Is it lack of resources? Is it a broken relationship that you can't find a way to get over? Is it perhaps lack of forgiveness? Forgiving your parents, forgiving your friends, forgiving even God. Could it be lack of forgiveness? Could it be imprisonment? Could it be some major failure in life? What is it that is preventing you from making that confession that Jesus indeed is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Or maybe perhaps it's lack of bravery or being wanting in courage. For you, who is Lord? Is it Jesus or is it your circumstances? Who's running your life? Is it God or is it appearances? Today, St. Andrew bravely proclaims Jesus as Lord and as Savior. And if we take on the charism of St. Andrew, you and I, we can look at those unfavorable circumstances in the eye and say to them, uh-uh, Jesus is Lord. I walk by faith and not by sight. Andrew bravely stood up for the truth and bravely so can you. If you don't want to, or if you can't, at least one thing you can't say is San Andreas' fault. Please stand. Today might be a good day, you know, considering we could make that confession, you know? We could start that believing. He didn't say you had to believe this much, right? I mean, maybe you can only believe this much. Maybe you can only confess this much, but it's a beginning. Let us bring our petitions and prayers before the Lord who is both kind and merciful. For all members of the church, may God's grace granted in the sacraments transform us and empower us for sharing the joy of the gospel with others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern, may the Holy Spirit bless them with wisdom and prudence in making decisions that affirm the dignity of life let us pray to the Lord. For marriages in crisis, may the Lord bring healing and forgiveness and the grace to move forward with love and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, both present and virtual, May a spirit of unity and charity prevail among us and draw us closer together in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for all who have died, especially George Nieves, for whom this Mass is offered. May our merciful God welcome them into his eternal banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we humbly ask that you hear our prayers and answer them in accordance with your divine and loving will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. That through these offerings, which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages, un ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, man, who with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray in confidence. In fact, let us now pray with courage the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 811, the summons, number 811.
Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so by the example of the blessed apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 810, Wherever He Leads, number eight. One zero.